Hello, and this is a quick run through and demonstration of the ArcSight Event Broker component that's available as part of the ArcSight Data Platform or ADP 2.0. Um, there isn't a huge amount to see with regards to this uh, because it's a, a bit of architecture, it's a bit of background, it's a bit of plumbing uh, that does part of the event shuffling and, and distribution of data within the ArcSight Data Platform itself. Uh, but it makes a lot of sense for me to just walk through some of the elements of what is in there, what it does, and how it operates. So uh, it does actually uh, make use of the Kafka open source uh, message bus technology underneath, which is incredibly uh, powerful and flexible. Uh, but what we've done is, is built on top specific use case based capabilities. So one of those is a Kafka manager. So we can actually dig into and, and see what's relevant information with regards to log data. So uh, we actually go to the interface. You can see it's on a specific port. I have this running on a virtual machine just to give a demonstration of what we have. Uh, and we have a, a cluster defined here. I can, I can do some simple operations here but let's let's dig into the cluster and take a closer look what's worth noting here is that we are running kafka so uh, there are uh, elements of what we have of operational components so we have uh, the various cluster nodes and we have a zookeeper which does the management aspect of things of distributing and, and uh, ensuring that the uh, nodes are communicating correctly um, so we can see the data here uh, that's what we're seeing there we can see as part of this cluster configuration uh, i've not quite got a real clustering uh, configured here in fact i've only got one broker one cluster a member here effectively so that's not really a cluster but this is a demonstration just to show what we have um, and we've got defined what we call uh, some topics here there's three topics um, but okay let's let's dig into the brokers a little bit so we can go into the details here like I said, I've only got one uh, broker here and it's it's communicating with itself. Uh, we can see there's a certain amount of data going in, certain amount of data going out. More importantly is one of the advantages of using Kafka is it gives us very good detail around the data, uh, what's coming in, what's going out, what's the bytes in, what's bytes out, and how that's uh, affecting change uh, as we look at log volumes going in and out of the system. So we can see that at a broker level. If we had multiple brokers, we'd see all those data as well. We only have one. But what we can do is we can dig in a little bit further on that specific broker itself. So now we can see some uh, ID information about what, what is actually going on within this broker. So we can see the number of uh, messages being processed, 100%, which is a good sign. Uh, we can see the metrics, which we saw earlier. We can see the event count. Now, this is average. Uh, this system hasn't been running for that long. Uh, so just bear that in mind. So this is an average calculated across that time period. And then we get down to uh, the topics. Now, what is a topic and what is a partition? Because it's talking about partitions there. Very briefly, I'm not going to dig in too much on, on Kafka technology here, but think of it this way. A partition is something that you would replicate between nodes in a cluster. So in this example, like I say, I've only got one node. Uh, if you had multiple nodes, you would replicate those that data uh, across those different nodes. So should one node fail, maybe it physically destroys itself. You have replicas of the data on other nodes, so we can very easily pull things back together again. So think of it from a partition point of view. Typically, the number of partitions is the number of nodes you have in your cluster environment. So yeah, like I say, this is not quite correct, but the default is two. The assumption is you have at least two nodes in your cluster because you want some resiliency with regards to event broker. What is a topic? So these are the topics here. I, I, ignore this one. This is this is one as a system one to manage the uh, the system itself. But what do we want to have with these topics? Topics. I think of this as a destination. So in this example, these are smart connectors that are feeding into this this particular topic, and we've done this configuration based on the smart connector itself. So we have one smart connector feeding into one topic called Blue Code Events. We have another uh, uh, smart connector feeding in. In this case, it's actually Windows Events into what we call Production Events. So think of uh, Kafka as a mechanism that allows you to uh, transiently store data. This is not a forwarding server. This is the ability to receive data, in this case from smart connectors, into what we call a topic. We want to keep a commonality with the technology and the terminology that Kafka uses. So we take that data, we put that data into a topic, we then replicate that data across different partitions, and then we consume data from that topic into whatever destination system we want. Now I'll show that in the case of Logger, but think of it this way. You could have multiple smart connectors going into one topic, or you could have one-to-one -one mapping, which is what we have here. Uh, we could do whatever we want. We are flexible as part of that. You can have many, many topics, and then you 
it allows you to then manage the replication and the num and which nodes are uh, replicating that data as well. So it's just a, a quick explanation of what, what is a topic and what is a partition there with regards to the functionality here. So that's topics. Let's go back up to the top again. Let's now look at this is the system. This is the data going in. What about the data going out? How do we get the data from this Kafka into other systems? Now, that's what we have as a consumer. So we go into the consumers here. Now, again, we've defined this on two different consumers, but this could be one consumer for all topics or, or, or whatever we want to do as this part of this configuration. So we actually have it set up here now, uh, one consumer for blue code events, one consumer for these production uh, events group. Uh, that's okay. That just means I'm doing two different consumers. I'll show this in logger in a second, but let's dig into the blue code group. We can see that uh, we've covered all of our data, so we've replicated it. Uh, is there any lag within the the consumption? So, you know, we're seeing a little bit, but this is this is the the mechanism that we use to consume. So again, think of this as a transient mechanism. Think of this as a way that we get data going in. We put it and store it, and we then replicate that across nodes, and then we use this consume mechanism where we go into that topic and we pull the data out and consume it. So in fact, actually, we've seen this jump up to we, we've fully consumed all the data that's available. Uh, Logger has pulled that data out. Now, remember, I talked about partitions. We had in this case, two partitions, and we split the data between those so that we can have some resiliency. Okay, it's a one node cluster. It's not really resilient, but you can see what we're doing. This isn't a forwarding server. This is collect data into a topic, replicate across partitions, then consumer pulls from that topic and does what it wants to do at the destination. So think of it as, like I say, this transient storage mechanism that we're storing this data for a period of time. So that's what we're seeing there with regards to the data. Now we can go back to our topics just to, to, to show what we can see. Uh, we can uh, just to show an illustration of the management and the, 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 the mechanisms that we have to, to measure and understand the data and, and troubleshoot issues. So we can see that the blue code events here, we've got two partitions, only one broker. Uh, it's all fully managed. There's no skew on the percentage. Everything's replicated. Okay. We can see the message uh, volume going in. Uh, we can see offsets and so on. We can, we can manage those partitions. We can run partition assignments to make sure that uh, we can cover off and ensure that there is, uh, uh, should a node in a cluster fail and so on. So, I just wanted to give a very quick run through of some of the configuration options and some of the management capability that's available within the event broker just to show what it does and a little bit of touch on the technology uh, of, of what it means. So that's okay. I've got data into my Kafka, Kafka cluster, in this case, the event broker, but how would I consume it? Now, one good way of consuming it is in this case with um, uh, Logger because Logger can act as a consumer. Now, actually, I go into my configuration receivers. It's a little bit confusing because it's a consumer, but we wanted to keep consistency with the location. Now, of course, we can still send data to Logger, so we can have folders, we can have UDB receivers and so on. But now we have this new construct called an event broker receiver. Now, again, remember, we broke this down by topic. So we have one event broker receiver for blue code events, the one for production events. In fact, if I go into the blue code events, it'll show you what's actually happening here. So it's actually connecting in the host name here. It's actually called Event Broker, so just a little bit confusing there. But it's the host name, and we're connecting to the to this particular uh, topic. We're giving the topic name here into the into the cluster, cluster and we're pulling out the events. So rem again, remember this is a transient storage. We're pulling out by topic the data from that uh, particular uh, topic within the cluster itself. So I can go back. Do I want to cancel? Yes. Just go back and we can see that there's two there. And just to show that it's actually doing something, uh, I go back to my search there. I remember it was blue coats. So I just run that search and hey presto, we have some events. Just let it render the data. We can see that there are some events received on two different sections here. So we can see it being received on a, on a playthrough of events here. We can also see it's magically come through this particular device called an event broker. So we can see that we are consuming data into Logger through the event broker itself. Uh, it, it's a, a, a much more uh, consistent, clusterable, and scalable architecture to allow us to, to pull in that data, have a transient storage, and have it then consumed. In this case, it's, it, it's Logger. Of course, you can have consumers for anything else, 
for example, Hadoop and so on. So it's just a very quick run through of uh, what Event Broker is, some of the technology involved and how it integrates. Thank you very much for your time.